So I'm, I'm feeling obligated to talk about J.J. Watt here. Um, but there's a real big problem. Trying to figure out where J.J. Watt's going to go. The way my brain works, process of elimination. How do you eliminate somebody? I can't, I can't eliminate anybody. Um, the, the one thing that comes to mind is we'll look at salary cap, but, but if you look around, one of the biggest contenders, not to say that they're even interested or, or that it could work, but if you ask around, I mean, I've been reading article after article after article, the Packers are near the top, and they've had one of the worst salary cap situations, and as we know, it is possible. It is possible. We've seen teams clear up space like it's nothing, restructure contracts, cut a bunch of guys, whatever, and then you sign somebody, plus you finagle his contract, you give him however many million per year, but in that first year the hit is is minimal. Um, so if, you, if the cap isn't even that big of a barrier, who do you eliminate from this list? I don't know, but let's look at it anyways. So the first thing that I decided to do was to just assume that he really wants to go to a contender, and that really starts to narrow things down pretty quickly because although we can daydream about teams possibly being contenders, I can sit here and say, well, the Jaguars could be a contender because, you know, we're going to get Trevor Lawrence, we're going to da-da-da-da-da. I don't think so, right? So as I go down the list from most cap down until we hit a contender, I'm taking the Jaguars off the list. Um, the Colts... Again, I think they could sell themselves, but they don't even have a quarterback. I'm taking them off the list. The Jets are a long-term project. The Patriots don't have a quarterback or a a direction or anything. Uh, Washington, no. Bengals, no. Broncos, no. Dolphins, again, you could probably try to sell it, but I'm kind of iffy on that one because I just don't think, you know, there's no clear path. There's no... There's even speculation Tua might not even be the quarterback. Now, if they go out and get Deshaun, then now we're talking. Um, I think it's unlikely they can get Deshaun and J.J., but let's get crazy and say they go get Deshaun. Now you've got a massive selling point because obviously they're good friends. They played together. They're contenders now. It's possible, but until that time, no. Um, Chargers, no. Buccaneers, let's start there. So first of all, let me clarify that when I'm going through the salary cap situations, this is the salary cap situation today, meaning there are some teams that probably are in a relatively rough spot, but they're going to be letting a lot of guys go and they're going to be fine. There are other teams that seem fine that are probably going to re-sign a ton of people that might be in a little bit more of a dire situation in the future. Um, but as of today, this is this is sort of the sweet spot for several reasons, in my opinion obviously contenders they just won the super bowl um tom brady probably isn't going to be there for very long but how much longer is jj watt going to be playing so he has the opportunity to go with a contender an established head coach an established quarterback you know arguably greatest of all time um and the 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 fact of the matter they could they could possibly start talking mini dynasty right tom and jj for the next three years or whatever um, on top of that, I think defensive line is the biggest need that they have. I mean, it's it's the core of their team. It's the strength of their team. And a lot of guys are going to be leaving. And this makes it so that we don't really miss a step. If anything, maybe we get better. We, we Let's say we re-sign Shaq Barrett. Um, Sue leaves, but we bring in J.J. Watt. Uh, we have the ability to put him outside, to put him inside. And we know Todd Bowles likes to move guys around. That'll give him a lot more flexibility. He's going to have more talent here with the Todd Bowles defense in terms of of using him schematically to where he's going to be schemed open if you will um ski you know in other words if you just try to double team him all day which he's the most double teamed player in all of football right now um you're going to cause more problems for yourself opening things up for everybody else so um I I just I don't see why this isn't the number one spot obviously there's going to be some question in terms of who's going to pay what for J.J. Watt um as well as just what he wants to do but if if contender is one of the biggest things i don't know why the buccaneers aren't top of that list of of we're going to pay you handsomely to bring you out here and i don't really see any negatives um i mean you know great weather right i mean i've always said if i could play for a team i'd play for tampa because I love the Clearwater area, you know, I mean, you're on the beautiful beach and it's warm weather and it's just, it would be fantastic. Um, so I don't really see a reason why that wouldn't be top of the list. Um, 
as far as good fits. So we'll start there with what I think is, is probably as depressing as it is for every other fan base out there, not Buccaneers fans. It just makes the most sense for me right off the top. Next would be the Browns. And um, although it's not as beautiful of beaches in uh, Cleveland as you'll find in um, Tampa or, or near Tampa, Cleveland also makes, I think, a ton of sense. They're sitting, so the Buccaneers right now are sitting at about $24 million in cap space. Uh, they got it down to $14 million in effective cap space. The Browns are sitting at 21 and 21 in effective cap space. So they may technically be even in a better cap situation. Um, you talk about contenders, I don't think there's any question. It's a little bit more volatile, right? Um, not as established of a quarterback. There's a little bit of a question mark in terms of what the locker room dynamics are. New young coach, kind of a, you know, not saying there's anything necessarily wrong with Baker, but there's some question about maybe things can go off the rails. You got Odell Beckham, where you're kind of iffy. You got Miles Garrett, who's been kind of iffy, you know, smashing people's heads with helmets and everything else. So maybe there'd be a slight concern of, I just feel like this thing can go off the rails kind of quickly. But if we set all that aside, they've got more than enough money to be able to pay J.J. Watt. Um, you've got Miles Garrett, who arguably is going to be a better pass rusher than you, which he's clearly never had that in his life. Um, J I mean, J.J. Watt is a better pass rusher, but at this point in his career, I don't know. I mean, it's definitely going to free him up. I think the Browns are definitely looking for that kind of a piece to be able to add to the defensive line. I think predominantly looking for another uh, edge rusher, but um, even if J.J. Watt is a down defensive end on the interior and occasionally kicking outside and, and, you know, when we're using four down hand in the dirt guys, um, then, I mean, it just, it just, again, it just makes perfect sense for, for both sides. Again, a little bit more iffy from J.J. Watt. I don't know exactly his definition of contender, but if, if it's not the Browns, then we're talking about about four teams, right? Because the Browns are about as, as talented as they get. And it's a, again, it's a, it's a great offense that has some good pieces on defense. And, um, I mean, he would just be that extra piece. And, and, and we've got the draft and, and free agency coming up where we can add more to it. I mean, every mock draft I do, we got linebackers. So he's probably going to get a new linebacker right behind him. We still got Denzel Ward. We can get another corner if we want to add to that. We can get a safety if we want to add to that. I mean, there's not too many missing pieces already on the table. One of the best offensive lines in football. Great wide receiver duo. Uh, quarterback. We've got a good edge rusher. You bring in J.J., you add a couple pieces. I mean, it's just it's a great team. So I think the Browns also make a ton of sense for J.J. Watt. As we work our way down the list, the Cowboys, I'm going to scratch off. Um, no offense, it's just there's no way. Um, it's going to be too similar of a situation to what's going on in Houston. Um, but as you go one beyond that, you've got the Baltimore Ravens sitting at $18.2 million, 18.2 uh, effective cap space. Um, again, it makes sense. Uh, you know, again, it's going to depend on his definition of contender, but, but they're right there. I mean, it's Baltimore's right there. They've got a great rushing team, which probably also means not not only is it the other benefit of having a good offense is it's going to keep you off the field and keep you a little bit more fresh and a little bit more healthy which is important for jj watt at this point in his career but it's a rushing team too so they 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 take some time off the clock um they, they have sort of this smash mouth identity which is obviously going to work to his benefit they've always done great with their defenses although i don't know that um they, they don't exactly have like a miles garrett for example on their team but they've always been very good at getting the right guys for their system for their scheme and using them properly and just having really good defenses so i mean he's going to come into a situation where he's just a part of an already talented machine and i think that that would that would mean a lot to him the biggest question i think for him outside of just you know picking the right contract and being in the right city and all that kind of stuff is am i the piece that's going to put it over i think you can make the case for um well, Tampa doesn't need to be put over, but but Cleveland kind of makes sense in terms of I can see the vision where this is the thing that puts us over. Um, for the Ravens, maybe a little bit less so because, again, I don't know if defense is, is the biggest issue, but it's certainly not going to hurt, and you can definitely make a case that with the, the supporting cast, the quarterback, offensive line, running backs, um, hopefully get some more wide receiver help, the, the guys around me along the defensive line, the, the defensive culture in Baltimore, it, it just it would be kind of cool. Um, and also, you're you're relatively close to your brothers being in the AFC. You know, you'd have to play against them. 
But, um, you know, you could hang out or something. I don't really know. I don't know how that works. Who cares? But I do think Baltimore would make a good amount of sense. Um, as we continue on, the Cardinals are kind of iffy. I think it would be a great fit for Arizona, who would love to get some defensive line help. Um, there's some talk about um, not only do we have – Chandler Jones, who's getting much older and won't be around much longer. There's a lot of talk about Hassan Reddick possibly not coming back. So they, they could desperately use a guy like J.J. I just think he's looking at it saying there's no way. I mean, again, entirely too similar to what he had in Houston where, you know, we've got a quarterback and we've got a wide receiver who used to be a Texan, so that's kind of cool. But outside of that, I mean, he's got no help. He's got – it's just – it's not great. So I'm going to say no to Arizona. The 49ers, no. I mean, you could possibly make a case, but they don't even know who their quarterback is. I'm sorry, No. Panthers, no. Lions, again, they would love J.J. Watt. I mean, absolutely love him, but I don't know how he looks at that team and says, I'm going to put them over the hump. Again, what, with Goff? With who? What, what are we doing? Now, if they had an established quarterback, let's just say, again, let's use the Deshaun Watson piece. If Deshaun goes to the Lions, could you make a case? It's a, it's a tough sell, but Deshaun with Galladay, decent offensive line, some talented running back, uh, play you've got you know maybe Okuda takes a step you could maybe make a case but I just I don't think that there's any way but that brings us to the Seattle Seahawks who I think have to be next on the list and again I don't know where he stands on that I think if he's being realistic I don't know that I'm going to say yeah I'm going to put that team over the hump they just they've fallen down to having just nothing and I get that they're constantly trying to go out and find that next defensive line piece um they went out and got a great safety in Jamal Adams. They're doing some stuff. You've got a good quarterback. You've got a good wide receiver, a couple good wide receivers. So you could make the case that, look, with J.J. Watt, we're taking this thing to the next level. But, again, who's going to help him along the defensive line? And you know that that GM of yours ain't going to do anything. Schneider has not done jack in terms of bringing in talent outside of D.K. Metcalf in the second round. Like that one pick in the last five years, whoop de doo so I just, I just don't like it. I, I don't think I'm the piece if I'm J.J. Watt. Maybe. I mean, it'd be kind of cool. You know, you're working with a former Badger at quarterback, and you could maybe try to sell it. Um, I don't know, man. I just, I, I, I just don't know that that's going to be enough. Maybe. Maybe. And I, I certainly would understand it from both sides. I'm sure Seattle is, is working the phones real hard to get J.J. in the building. Um I just don't know if they could sell me hard enough to prove to me that um, despite the fact that there's really nobody else along this defensive line and, and everybody's just getting old and falling apart. And the linebackers, I mean, we got like, you know, the guy from the Legion of Boom day is still hanging on for a little bit, but probably not for much longer. We drafted a guy, but he's, you know, he's not very good because I don't know how to draft. Um, and we brought in one safety, which, I mean, and that's the other thing. How is that for a selling point? Like we did our big massive, like this is going to change the world free agent acquisition last year it didn't do anything it didn't help you so i just i don't think so it's just it's not going to work for me so as we work our way down the list obviously texans are off the list um giants i don't think they can sell hard enough um i actually think it would be a phenomenal fit and it would be lovely for the giants but i just think they're too far away right they would love to have a guy like that but it's already kind of a talented defensive line that's sort of not really their biggest issue anyways so that's obviously off the list then you come to the buffalo bills which are based on what a lot of people say the odds on favorite i mean there's no question what the buffalo bills need to do their 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 offense is absolutely on fire right now so you've got an established head coach a great organization in terms of like if you're just wanting to get away from the chaos and the nonsense having been in houston so poorly run you go to Buffalo and you feel better, right? When, you, when you've got a head coach that's nominated for or wins coach of the year basically every year, you feel good about that. Um, the culture and the structure and all that stuff. You've got a young, extremely talented quarterback. Um, Stephon Diggs was brought in that just lit that offense on fire. Uh, the, the biggest issue is defense. And um, I, I do think it's, it's an easy sell to say, look, you are that missing piece. You know, if we look at very quickly switch over here, the biggest issue I have is that it seems very short term because it's going to be you and Jerry Hughes tearing it up. Right? That's the biggest thing. The problem is Jerry Hughes is 33 years old and in the final year of his contract. So I'm looking at it saying, OK, maybe I come in there. We win a Super Bowl year one. What do we do after that? Um, 
Like, is Ed Oliver going to take a step? Is is uh, AJ and Epinesa going to take a step? Because if they don't, I'm back in, in Houston again. No, it's not exactly like that because it's a much better offense. But it, in terms of me being able to affect the quarterback, if it just comes down to double-team me all day and, and our defense can't do anything, that's not great. So year one, J.J. Watt, Jerry Hughes, and this offense, along with Tredavious White and the other players they have on this defense, I mean, that is lethal. And there's no question in my mind – I'll be honest, I'll put him above the Chiefs to be in the, the AFC representation in the Super Bowl um, just with that one move. I mean, they might already be anyways, but that's a separate thing. Um, this 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 absolutely puts him over the edge. So I think it should be a strong consideration. Um, again, I'm, I'm kind of taking some liberties here because I don't want to just go through every team and assuming he wants to go to a contender, which I think makes sense. The guy's made a ridiculous amount of money. He knows he doesn't have much time. He's never been in a Super Bowl. Let's 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 go out and get it. So I'm going to assume that that's part of the equation. And obviously he's going to have a billion suitors and uh, he's going to have the ability to choose a team that's going to pay him and be in a city that he wants to be in and play for a contender because pretty much every team in the NFL is going to at least call and inquire. So I think the bills are near the top. Again, we are drifting into the bad salary cap territory. They're $1.8 million in the hole, but we know these guys are wizards with the cap. They'll clear that up. If they want to make room for JJ Watt, um, they'll, they'll do it. Next up, you got the Tennessee Titans. I think this is another um, another great option. Uh, it's a team that has a really good offense. It's similar to Baltimore in terms of just being a. I mean, it's it's actually extremely similar to Baltimore in in every facet. I mean, if you're okay going to Baltimore, you're okay going to Tennessee. Um, the offense is just incredible, and it's a smash mouth, violent team. Um, doesn't necessarily have the defensive culture that uh that baltimore has but but who cares right the the point is it's incredibly um it's, it's a team that's just they have everything they just don't have pass rush and jj watt could help to bring that pass rush but again it's it's sort of a question and maybe he doesn't care but i mean the the whole problem in houston was he wasn't affecting the quarterback as much because they just erased him because there's nobody else whitney merciless couldn't do anything nobody else on that defense could do anything so he might be a little wary of going to a team that says, hey, we need you because we don't have anybody. He might just look at that and say, yeah, that's the problem. So that would be the one hindrance. From the Titan standpoint, though, it's sort of, I will give I'll give you anything. Please, 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 whatever you want, I will give it to you. So it's, it's a little bit one-sided. It's a no-brainer for the Titans to go as far all-in as you can to get J.J. Watt. Um, and I guess that's a little debatable. How much do you think he can still play? How much do the injuries concern you? How much money does he want? It's not a really a no-brainer for anybody, depending on those factors. But if you are a team like the Titans saying, we're right there, but we just have nothing for pass rush, it makes a lot of sense. The question then again is, from J.J. Watt's standpoint, do I want to go to a team that has no pass rush? Not to say there's no help at all, but it's, it's not as good as you'd like it to be. So um, if I'm the Titans the big selling point if you're going to try to sell them don't be too desperate because that's going to scare them away next up you got the minnesota vikings i haven't seen anybody mention the vikings but i will um i've talked about in my mock drafts the the fact that this is a defensive football ball team i know that the offense is more talented than the defense but it's just a culture thing this is a defensive football team um the offense is already there i don't know why they're so dependent or, or everybody wants to get rid of kirk cousins I mean, look, if we want to tear it down and rebuild, fine. But if we're going to try to do a short-term little let's let's go get a Super Bowl, let's keep Cousins because it's working. Let's work on building the offensive line. we got the best wide receiver duo in football. We've got one of the best running backs in football. The offense is there. Defensively, we've got Daniil Hunter coming back. we got Michael Pierce, who's a, a big-body guy who's pretty talented on the interior. Um, if you add J.J. Watt to that, and I've been adding Quiddy Pay and, and Gregory Rousseau and guys like that to the – to the Vikings for some time now because the the idea of getting additional talent on that side of the ball is uh impressive or it, it's it's impressive I'm just my brain is warped it's um it's clear to see why that would be massively beneficial that's I don't know how to make that more concise um again the issue is going to be selling point and I think it could be tough um to say contender but but it's one of the teams where I think there's a road 
to to making a sales pitch. I don't know that they're that vastly different than where the Seahawks are, to be completely honest. Obviously, it was a, a bad run last year. But when you're talking about Daniil Hunter not being available, and that's the biggest selling point the Vikings have, is not only can we argue that we can be contenders with your help, but look how much help you're going to get. Nobody's going to put all their attention on you with Daniil Hunter being there. Are you kidding me? Plus, Pierce requires a double team. He's a massive human being. You don't have enough people on your offensive line to block up our defensive line. That's the biggest selling point. Now, does he want to go to Minnesota, um, be in the frigid cold just for money? And just, I mean, again, there's better contenders than the Vikings, but I could see the Vikings being a team that wants to go in on it. And maybe if they just offer the most money, which is going to be tough because there's seven and a half million dollars in the hole, they could be an option. Um, but I, I, I don't think that's it, but I wanted to at least bring that up because I think it's more realistic than people maybe want to give it credit for. The Raiders, again, it goes without saying they have no money, but, I mean, it's another team that, um, what would it be similar to? I guess kind of put it in the Tennessee Titans and Baltimore Ravens uh, wheelhouse, but, again, the, the biggest issue is going to be can you sell it, and I don't think they they can sell it, right? They've got a good enough offense, but I don't think they have enough talent on defense, and I don't think they have... They don't have the money, and they don't have uh, the ability to prove that they can be contenders with them. So I don't think that's it. Um, Kansas City Chiefs are definitely intriguing. Um, no question about the contender aspect. The the cap issue is a problem. But, hey, if the Packers are on the list, I don't know why the Chiefs wouldn't be. Um, they do have some talent along the defensive side of the ball. Um I don't. The, the biggest issue is I can talk about the Packers cap and say that technically they can free up enough space because I know the guys by name that we can move on from. I don't know what the Chiefs can necessarily do, but um, very obvious to me that the Chiefs, again, the head coach is established. The quarterback is established. There's no real volatility here. Um, the defense is talented, right? You look at the individual pieces and say, ah, you know, these aren't the most elite players in the world, right? There's not a Miles Garrett again. But, um, I mean, they're consistently in the top 10 in terms of what, what they do with points and everything else. So they've got a great defensive coordinator to be able to figure all that stuff out and how to, to make this thing work. And I'm sure having a great offense helps that. Um, but on top of that, you do have a really good pass rusher, n not on the level of J.J. Watt or, or a, you know, super hyper elite guy, but good enough that it's going to make for a great duo. So I, I think, again, depending on how good they can be with the cap, this is a, a fantastic opportunity for the Chiefs. Um, seems relatively unlikely, but I could see that being a decent fit. Uh, next up, we got the Rams. And, and again, it's just, are, are they contenders? Yes. Um, would him and Aaron Donald be the, the scariest duo in, in football history? Yeah, probably. I mean, it's funny when you talk about compares, comparing who's a better pass rusher. And most people at this point would say Aaron Donald, but really peak J.J. Watt was actually better than what we've seen a lot from Aaron Donald. He's, he's that good. And, and to be able to be paired next to him, I don't know that he turns that down. Again, the biggest issue is the money. We're talking $26.5 million in the hole. Can you make that work? Um, I think it checks all the other boxes, though. You've, you've got a good defense. You've got a good defensive uh, culture. You know, I mean, number one defense in football last year. The, the bigger issue, though, is we're already the number one defense. Are we going to be like the number one times two defense, and that's going to help us? Because I, I don't know. I, now, the selling point is, hey, we brought in Matt Stafford, and that's going to fix everything. I don't know. I don't know if you can sell that quite as easily. Um but I, I, should we put them on the list? Sure, we'll put them on the list. I, I, I don't think it makes a ton of sense based on the cap. And again, the offense is a bigger pro problem than the defense. But um, whatever. Next up is the Green Bay Packers. Um, this one is, is at the top of a lot of lists. The only reason that this isn't just let's just write it in already is that they are the fifth worst in terms of their salary cap situation right now. $28 million in the hole. Now, I mean, th there are articles out there showing how they can free up over 70 million dollars if they do a bunch of crazy stuff i think they can get out of the hole relatively easily just by cutting some of the guys that they probably would cut anyways preston smith i think regardless of the cap is going to be gone that's eight million bucks uh rick wagner you know we can probably move on from him um christian kirksey i think is another like eight million dollars that just it's not even close to a consideration so they can get out of the red fairly easily the problem is you got to get well out of the red before you even consider 
this. And then you got to worry about re-signing other guys. Like, are we going to re-sign Corey Lindsley or Aaron Jones or, or Kevin King or any of those guys? Um, and then, you you know, you have to have enough money for the draft prospects. You generally don't want to go into the se- season with zero dollars. You want to have an eight to ten million dollar cushion to carry into the season. So we not only do they need to, to free up 30 million, they probably got to get another 20 million on top of that before we can even talk about it. So we're talking 50 million dollars. Pretty much anything and everything you can do with the cap, you have to do. Everybody you can cut, you got to cut. Um, everybody you can extend, Devonte automatically get an extension. A bunch of these guys getting extensions, and you got to restructure Zadarius Smith. You got to restructure Aaron Rodgers. You got to restructure David Bakhtiari, who you just signed five seconds ago, which would seem strange. Um, that is obviously the biggest hurdle. Now, JJ, would he love to come home to Wisconsin? Not only did he play for the Badgers, he is from Wisconsin. That's where his family lives. Um, yeah, I think he would absolutely love that. I mean, he grew up a Green Bay Packers fan. To be able to end his career here with Aaron Rodgers, a contender, yes. I mean, it checks every other box to the extreme. Um, the the fact that can this put him over the edge? There's no question it can put him over the edge. The Am I going to get any help? Yes, Darius Smith. You got Kenny Clark that's going to be right next to you, depending on the formation. You've got um, Rashawn Gary who's who's coming on real strong. Nobody really talks about him, but I think he he I think he had better stats than Zadarius by the end of the year in terms of pressures. I I, I don't know about pressure percentage, I should say. Um, so yeah, I mean you you've got that on top of Jair, the the best corner in football, and Savage and Amos who ended the year the best safety duo in football. I mean this is a a pretty scary defense that still has a better offense than their defense. So. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a no-brainer, but the biggest problem is going to be the cap. And although Brian Gutekunst, the GM, has been more aggressive lately, this this might be a, a bridge too far. The only way I really see this happening is if J.J. Watt does something similar to what Ben Roethlisberger says and just says, I don't really care about money at this point in my career. I've made so much money. I want to win a championship, and I'm willing to do whatever it takes. The The problem with that is he's not going to have to, right? Um He's not going to have to take a pay cut because the Bucks are going to just offer him a billion dollars, right? Don't take a pay cut and go to Green Bay. Come here. We'll pay you adequately. Um, so it's not impossible, but it is relatively unlikely. Uh, after that, you got the Pittsburgh Steelers, $30 million in the hole. I just, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't think so. I know it's a real popular talking point because both of his brothers are Steelers and it makes sense. There is a, a source out there somewhere saying that he doesn't want to play with his brothers. Um, I don't exactly know how realistic that is, how true that is, or whatever. But the fact of the matter is, not only is that out there, but I don't know that they can pay him number two. And on top of that, it doesn't feel like a contender to me. It just doesn't. I mean, it's it's already a dominant defense. I mean, it's similar to what I said about the Rams, but even more so because it's it's already a dominant defense, and that offense is just a disaster. Um, it just is. It was, it was It was down the stretch. As I said, it was worse than the Jets' offense. Uh, toward the end of the season it was it was putrid so i i have a feeling you go there and if you're going there you're just hanging out with your brothers in pittsburgh and 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 so what honestly i mean so what i just don't see that as a big selling point i mean maybe you could have the most dominant defense in football cool you have the most dominant defense in football and miss the playoffs congratulations i just don't think he's interested he's not going to make a lot of money there the team is clearly falling apart at the seams you got guys doing tiktoks on the field it's just it doesn't feel like a very good culture. And I'm sure he talks to his brothers and I'm sure his brothers tell him like, this is not great here. And it's just, he's not going to go there. That's probably where that, that source comes from. It's not that he doesn't want to be with his brothers. It's that he doesn't want to go to the Steelers. I just, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, the only three teams remaining are the Falcons, Eagles, and Saints. And I don't honestly think, I mean, the Falcons are off the list. The Eagles are off the list. The only team you could say is the Saints, but they're seventy million dollars in the hole. Obviously, they're going to free up a ton with with uh, Breeze leaving, but um, I just don't think you can call them contenders at this point. I mean, if it was a year prior, um, maybe, but with Breeze leaving, I just I don't think that that makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, it would be a, a super scary defense, and he would have plenty of help along that defensive line, and he he would be able to revitalize his career and everything, but. I just don't see any way that they free up that much money in order to sign J.J. Watt. I don't see the point in doing it um, without without uh, Breeze being there. I just don't see that as a great thing. So, I mean, if we kind of do a quick recap, 
The Packers make the most sense, but I don't know that it's in the cards financially unless J.J. Watt just says, I just I want to go there. I mean, he has to make a decision that that's the team I want to play for no matter what and make that concession for the Packers, and I, I don't think that that's going to happen. Um, again, the, the Chiefs make sense if they can free up enough money to do so. It's sort of automatic. You're playing for one of the most dominant offenses in football. Can they make it work financially? Um the Titans make sense if he's willing to, you know, if he believes that he can play well there with, despite the lack of help. It, it is a team that is a contender, but I do think that there are better options available. Seahawks, I think, make a decent amount of sense. They don't have a huge amount of money. I do worry about the, the way that that team is structured. I don't think that they do a good job of building. Um, it's a team that I think has been eroding for five to six years, so I just I feel like he's not going to be able to be that, that piece that makes it all better. Um let's see the lions no panthers no 49ers and cardinals no ravens um i think is a very good option to be completely honest um it's 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 up there among the top options the question is can you can you sell them i mean they i don't know that they've proven that they can get over the hump i mean they have such a hard time in the playoffs and if the biggest concern is, okay, we're going to dominate the regular season, we're going to get into the playoffs, we're going to win one game, and then the very next game, you know, Lamar falls apart or, or whatever, like the offense just can't produce, there's nothing I can do, and I end up walking into the tunnel with my head hung again. Um, so that would be a concern. So that kind of leaves us with the Browns and the Buccaneers, and, and I just think given the fact that they're both, you know, $20 million above the cap, they both have uh, good offenses, they both have... I mean, just everything you could need. In terms of which would you prefer, probably the Buccaneers, to be completely honest. Um, I'm a little concerned about everybody leaving and me being the lone guy there again. I worry about can they repeat, um, you know, how much of that is, is static. Is it going to stay? The Browns make more sense in terms of they're a younger team. I mean, that offensive line is coming back. The quarterback's coming back. The quarter, the, the head coach, I mean, they're going into year two which is always a, a, a real scary time in terms of being just dominant. I believe they're going to, maybe it's year three. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Um, the, the ability to possibly get better. And then again, I think having the ability to work with Miles Garrett on the other side is going to really help free things up. So those are the two most obvious options, in my opinion, are the Browns and the Buccaneers. Um, but again, I, I think he's going to get calls from 32 teams. Um, some of them obviously are, are just calling to see like, hey, what's the price, whatever, um, just to kind of gauge what's going on because you can't not call about them. Um, but I think you've got probably half the league that are serious contenders and are willing, depending on the situation, to, to possibly try to make an offer to them, including a lot of teams that we didn't mention because they're not contenders. Um, you know, just teams with a lot of money, for example, if we just move up the list, the Chargers would love to have them. The Dolphins would kill to have them. And I, and I don't think that's impossible. It's just a little bit of a harder sell that they're going to to get it done. The Broncos, you know, you got Fangio. If they can just get a quarterback in there, again, it's a tough sell, but they can make it work. Uh, Bengals, no question, would love to have them. Doubt it. Washington, good defense, plenty of money, would love to have them. No way in the world you'd want to go to that disaster of an organization, though. Patriots under Bill Belichick. I mean, obviously, you got the structure there. They got plenty of money. Uh, Jets under Sala. You know, I mean, similarly, a lot of guys would love to play for them. Um, the Colts, I, I mean, the Colts might even have to be on the list. It, again, it's a tough selling point, but if they can just secure a quarterback, they have the money. If they can get a guy like Deshaun, which I know that's kind of a disaster, but get somebody, get anybody, prove that you have a quarterback, and, um, you know, I mean, that's 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 money, and they can offer just stupid money to J.J. Watt. They got $70 million over the cap right now. They got more than enough money that they can shake a, a stick at. The Jaguars with $77.5 million are in a similar position if they can sell them, right? If they get their college head coach, head coach who's used to recruiting, to uh, go meet up with them and say that this is going to be a different era, man. We're, we're going old school. You know, we're bringing in Trevor Lawrence. We're going to tear it up. It's not impossible, but um, there's going to be a lot of competition. It's going to be real interesting to see, and I'm, I'm excited to start hearing some rumors crop up in terms of what the best thing is to do. Um, I'm guessing he's taking some time to just ponder what he even wants to do, but, um, you know, he is, he is currently, because he was let go, he can sign with anybody today. The, the trade is done. Um, he can do whatever he wants to do. He's a free man, but I'm sure he's going to want to wait and see what comes in. Unless again, he just, he knows where he wants to go. Um, 
And again, Pittsburgh and Green Bay make the most sense, assuming that rumor that he doesn't want to go to Pittsburgh is is, um, is untrue. Then it would; those would be the only two teams I could see him saying that's where I want to go, no matter what. But um, yeah, that's about it. I mean, the only other note that I would think is the fact that the Texans couldn't really trade him means that the teams didn't want to take on his his contract, meaning they didn't think that that was a good value, um, especially considering they would have to give up additional draft compensation on top, and they're saying we're not going to do that. So clearly they're not looking at this guy as like a you know twenty five twenty six million dollar maybe they are I don't know but I, I don't think that that's the case if it was then they'd offer up some some trade compensation to the Texans to go get him so it'll be interesting I don't know I don't know what what he's viewed at and where he wants to go and all that um, Packer fans I will say again I don't think he's coming here but um, do I think that this could be the thing that puts us over the edge 100,000%. And uh, I will talk more about that on my podcast on Monday when we dive a little bit more into his stats. Check out the Packernet podcast. I'm taking the weekend off so I can get some more YouTube stuff done, although I made a stupid mistake. I may have the podcast fired up for tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But um, anyways, that's all I got. And um, excited to see where JJ goes. Take care.